Whew. All right, gotta get hyped up. <laughs> Pod- podcast, podcast. <laughs> Poorly planned. Poorly planned. Poorly planned. <laughs> it explodes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the eighty-fourth, I believe, episode of, <laughs> of the Poorly Planned Podcast. My name is Benedict. You may know me better as BHL Hudson. Here we talk about movies, TV shows, a bunch of nonsense. With me, as always, is my friend, co-host. And, um, God. Go on. Go on. Um. There's, there's so many things to say. Handsome, buddy? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's been 84 episodes and we finally <laughs> made it. And I finally gave you your legal name as an intro. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome, buddy. <laughs> that would be, God, I imagine that's what John Hamm made everyone call him on set of Baby Driver. <laughs> the name's Buddy. Handsome <laughs> Buddy. Buddy. He shoots anyone who doesn't call him that in real life. <laughs> the game's over. He really shoots you. Speaking of um, kind of that, what you said, have you seen the clip of Justin Timberlake beatboxing? I know it's very random what I'm asking. <laughs> but it's, it How is... the hell has that anything to do with what we were talking <laughs> because about? Because he goes, in the clip he goes, the name's Lake, Timberlake, and then he starts beatboxing and dancing, and it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's so funny. I'm sending it to you later. It's the greatest I, yeah, thing. Yeah, please do. I've not, see, I've not seen this. Uh, anyway. It sounds absolutely delightful. <laughs> so... Uh, welcome back to the Poorly Planned. Here we talk about movies. I already said that. Um, today we're gonna do a cheeky <laughs> little news episode. Just, just a cheeky Ooh, one. Sneak it in there. God um, damn. Yeah, we like it. So that's that's There's that. No, really. no, no, no mini reviews. Yes. No, no mini reviews today. We'll do. I think maybe unless something <laughs> crazy happens. Maybe next week we'll do a mini reviews one. You know. <laughs> and I mean, knowing our lives <laughs> always does. <laughs> Full of adventure, as we've established many times. Um, but today we're talking, we're talking a bunch of trailers. We got so many trailers. We got, Ooh. we got all kinds of news. We got crow news. We got wick news. We got, and crow and wick news. I don't mean to make you very, <laughs> very happy, but, and I believe I'll have to title the episode something like this, but it is in fact a Mickelathon today in news. Cause we have not one, a Mickelathon. not two, but three pieces of news from the legendary man. Mess, Damn, what the hell? Lives, uh, well, I mean, I've moved relatively recently. (laughs) Who lives on in our hearts, (laughs) but not in our world. Who lives? I mean, you know, (laughs) to be fair to him. (laughs) Mess, because who is currently alive? (laughs) Uh, He used to, well, no, I used to live very, very close to him, and uh, I never ran into him, and it's one of my biggest regrets in life. Now I live really close to him. Yeah, yeah, you moved kind of close to where I used to live. I like how we tag team our Mickelson connection. (laughs) I'm like, all right, I'm out. You got to get in there. You can run into it. Go, 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 go. God. So anyway, I'm really excited to get to that. But first, we got some trailers to talk about. I don't know if you're ready for this. Okay. Um, I probably haven't seen most of these. (laughs) Well, did you see the trailer for Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings, I believe it's called? Oh, is that the the new Marvel one? It is, yes. I didn't actually see this. Yeah. You you did? No, no. I did. I did actually. Okay, because yeah. <laughs> you went so like, like you'd really done so. You're like, I did not actually see that one. <laughs> like you, like that would make it better content. <laughs> I actually have no idea what you're talking about. I actually don't know who I'm talking to right now. <laughs> who are you? Um, so Shang Chi? Did you say? <laughs> Was that your name? <laughs> so what do you think of the uh, the Shang Chi trailer? I won't lie to you. I just kind of like watched it, kind of. In the corner of my eye, <laughs> it looks okay. I don't really is it. I don't really know the connection. How it'll it, it's in the MCU, right? Or is it just like a Marvel stand? No, it's in the MCU. Yeah, which I'm I'm curious to see how it how it ties in. Because um, it's it feels like the the vibe was very different from what we've seen in other MCU. I feel at least. Yeah, which I actually so <laughs> so trash. So I'm, I'm not for it actually. <laughs> I actually that's something I really liked about it is that it didn't look completely. Like, it's definitely, you know, MCU-ified in some ways, but, like, it didn't look completely like an... But it's not quite Tafaz. <laughs> Nothing is, really. <laughs> Including Tafaz. <laughs> Including um, Tafaz. But damn. it did have... Like, it did look a bit different. There were some shots in there that I was like, all right, this looks like a... It's not, like, the typical way, you know, these things are, are shot. All right, that's a shout, you know. That's a shout, you know. And it looked... Uh, I actually thought it looked really good. Um, the... I'm really looking forward to seeing this new, uh, like... I think the action in this will be standout because that's like 
basically, mm. <laughs> if there's one thing you don't want to fuck up about this character, it's like his action scenes. It's the action. I mean, he is. Well, I believe I've, I've never heard of this Shang Chi dude. Shang Chi. Um, God, me. fucking <laughs> unmarvel <laughs> cultured man. <laughs> Chance Green Lantern. <laughs> <sighs> Darkest Night. <laughs> yeah, and it's like uh, I believe. It, in the comics, he's called Shang Chi, the master of kung fu. So if they fuck up the martial arts in this, that'll be pretty awkward. It's like it's wait. like if they made an Iron Fist show and then the action was terrible. Oh wait, God, yeah, imagine that, Marvel. <laughs> imagine that, fucking whatever your name is, who played Iron Fist, Danny Rand. Yeah, I know that's I know that's I know that is Iron it, Fist. It's close. Um, yeah, and he kicks he kicks two dudes in the face at the same time. That looked pretty cool. Um, the Mandarin's in. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> the Mandarin for real, so not. The Mandarin? He's not real. <laughs> and um, he has instead of. But how does rings. that work? So the so the, that's just so the Mandarin. Is that just a random like no connection to the first Mandarin? No, so one? there is because there was actually a short film with Kingsley, which I think you would actually very much enjoy, where he's in prison and the real Mandarin sends someone to come get him, and at the end it's like the real Mandarin's pissed but I that thought, you took his name. I thought the the fire boy who goes. Yeah, yeah, the Mandarin. No, but I think I think he meant like metaphorically, I am the Mandarin, but like the there's an actual Mandarin. This is all very confusing. <laughs> and yeah, he has like he has like bracelets instead of rings, which uh, I guess because they just did the Infinity Stone thing, kinda... <laughs> which I guess is kind of kind of hip these days. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm basically Shang Chi then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Freddie. In case you don't know, Freddie rocks like a he's that dude who has like a billion bracelets. Um, dude, we were we were playing volleyball the other day, and this dude with long hair was like. Uh, yo, does anyone have a hairband to the girls? And Freddy's like, I got you, bro. And he pulled a hairband <laughs> off his wrist. I was like, of f***ing course this dude has. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I genuinely have... I'm rocking... I've got three on the wrist right now. <sighs> case of emergency. Yeah. No, you're... You're a real... <laughs> treat to the world. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I, People are happy that you're here, I guess. <laughs> I think it looks good. Um, I'm excited to see the... Oh, I forget his name now, but... He seems like a fun guy. Shang Chi. No, the, the guy playing. <laughs> he seems like a fun guy. I'm excited to see that. And also, yeah, I watched it and I was like, I didn't really like realize, not realize, but like, I wasn't really thinking that this is an MCU thing. And then afterwards, I was like, oh yeah, and it is MCU. So I'm curious to see how it, you know, ties into that. Uh, maybe we'll get an Ant Man cameo. That's what I'm rooting for. <laughs> God, Paul Rudd just struts in. <laughs> Paul Rudd is the main character. <laughs> Um, well then, speaking of, um, let's see if I can make a connection here. Okay, Rudd. Rudd is, um, not, no, there's no connection. Because I was going to say Rudd's a charismatic dude, but then I realized this movie I'm about to talk about is Fast and Furious 9. <laughs> so that connection would not work at all. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure there's someone charismatic in that. Probably. Isn't The Rock? He's not in it, so. Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking Vin Diesel, not really Mr. Charisma. Not really. Blanta, not really. Blanta Mr. is, I mean, Blant, Blanta is made out of pure charisma, so it'd be unfair to <laughs> He's take him. Chiseled from a stone of charisma. Um, <laughs> God, molded from God's charismatic hands. Um, yeah, what's his, what's his actual name? Tyrese. Tyrese Blanta. Tyrese Blanta. Yeah, it says that on his passport. It's like uh, that scene. Tyrese. In- Tyrese Mel. Think about it. Ah, I thought about it. Ah, I loved it. Brilliant, isn't it? Um. Anyway, <laughs> did you see Still this trailer? Still doesn't get it, but wants to move on. <laughs> I have. I don't think I have. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's the same as usual. It's the same thing you're used to seeing. Uh, except they go to space at the end. Kind of, it's implied. Do they actually go to space? So they we have Tyrese and uh, what's his name? Uh, Ludacris. Who I believe you sent me a video on Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ludicrous <laughs> of him just walking in like some body of water, and then he's like, "This island is mine now." And then he just pulls up on an island, and I'm just like, "That's the video." <laughs> it's a very strange video. I guess that's what you do when you're just like rich and a celebrity. When you're when you're uh, ludicrous, <laughs> yeah, you just swim around the ocean. It's like a menace, and then just claim <laughs> bodies of water. And claim land. islands. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so they, like, strap on and, you know, Tyrese does his usual like, oh my god, I can't believe we're doing this. I'm I'm the funny one. And then they shoot off into space. And, and then he's the least funny person in the universe. <laughs> and then he goes to space and gets suffocated. <laughs> but hey, we'll, uh, we'll see. It looks, you know, it looks exactly how you expect it to look. It looks kind of, like, it'll be a fun time. You know? Do you say that not meaning it. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm definitely... It sounds like it'll be amazing. <laughs> 
God, I hate podcasting. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you have not seen this, but there was a trailer for Army of the Dead. You're going to say, oh, I did actually see that. I, I then... did. A- no, genuinely, I did actually see that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Classic banter. <laughs> um, Army of the Dead. Yeah. Interesting. It's the new uh, Zack Snyder film. I'm okay. not sure if it's a follow-up to his film Day of the Dead, because it would seem to be if it's, you know, same title kind of thing. Maybe it's like a soft reboot. I don't really know, but I saw the trailer. Soft reboot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> but uh, it, it... That moment when Zack Snyder hit you with a soft reboot. <laughs> when Zack Snyder becomes like weirdly Russian or something. Soft reboot. <laughs> so... Soft reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound like like some kind of really powerful like move a superhero has? The soft reboot. <laughs> this freaking Superman just looks you down the eye, whispers, soft reboot, <laughs> and then just pounds your head into the cement. <laughs> um, but so just lasers through your skull. It's Anyways, a, it's a heist zombie film mixed together. Oh, so and it actually stars- sounds. It looks that was quite good. Actually. Pretty, pretty damn cool. It has uh, Dave Batista and others, okay, presumably. Love the man. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it's just others. Dave Batista. They have to go into Vegas, which has been taken over by zombies and heist something. Looks pretty damn, pretty damn, damn. good actually. That's, it sounds like a like a pretty like simple, simple plot, but an enjoyable one. Yeah, and like they're they're um, what's it called? They're like zombie tigers, and the zombies can like uh, the zombies are a little bit more intelligent, so it looks you know it looks scary and fun, kind of. <laughs> So Batista is f- is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It has shades in it. I'm just discovering from looking at the the internet here, from Luke Cage, shades. Well, that's, no, no, no. I, I I hate that I immediately actually knew who you meant. Okay, good. Yeah. That's shades. And um, yeah, it looks kind of. Have you ever heard of the Dead Rising games? I have. Yeah. It looks kind of kind of that kind of vibe of like fun, a little bit of horror, a little bit of fun. You know, good a little st- bit of Batista. <laughs> As who doesn't the, like it the Dead Rising games are famous for just just a sprinkle of the Batiste <laughs> also is it Batista or Bautista because sometimes I see it spelled with a U well it's spelled Bautista but I think it's pronounced Batista we should we should get him on the show and ask him yeah ask him a personal question <laughs> um then Captain America Quattro is happening couldn't have said that with more what? of an American accent Captain America 4 is happening Quattro. Is that with is that with um with Mac? The Mac the Maxter. Return of the Mac key. Uh it will be penned by <laughs> the writer or showrunner of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And Okay. I assume I can't remember if this has been confirmed, but I assume Oh, there's a fing fly. Get the f out of it. Sorry. <laughs> Get the caught it, midair. <laughs> <laughs> but I assume yeah, it'll be about Mac uh Cap, Captain Mac. Um, Mac Macton America. We have to call him that from now on. Macton America. Macton America. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Freddy just looked into the distance dramatically, and then it's just. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> That'll stick. <laughs> Soft reboot. <laughs> so that's clearly what it'll be titled, Macton America. But um, Macton America. I mean, by the so way, stupid. Jay, the most juvenile sense of humor. <laughs> Someone pointed out that. You know, at the end of Falcon Winter Soldier, where it says Captain America and the Winter Soldier. I didn't think of this, but kind of f***ed up that they still call Sebastian Stan the Winter Soldier, which is, like, his mind-controlled persona that he's been trying to leave behind for, like, years. Yeah. So... <laughs> Not Bucky. Actually, Sebastian Stan. <laughs> so, um... But anyway, yeah, so there'll be a new Cap so They kind of did Sebastian dirty there. Yeah, so what do, you, what do you think of that? Are you excited to see more Mac in America and... On, on the big screen? <laughs> I mean, I don't think Mac in America on his own could carry a movie. It sounds really mean. But really? I think he does... He does. I think he needs some Sebastian Stan or, or something like that. I don't know, because he's always been a side character. But this is... You know? <clears throat> so maybe this is... His... But now he's mac <laughs> It's like his graduation to main protagonist role. I mean, he was basically the main character. But I get what you're saying. He had, like, support from the Stan. Um... But also, <laughs> I think <laughs> you've made a point that I think is good, but you did it while insulting Mac in America, which is kind of mean. But I do think, like, the MCU generally, they do these team-up... Like, Captain America the Winter Soldier is, like, he has, you know, he has Mac, he has Black Widow, he has Sebastian, and, like, Thor yeah. Ragnarok, there's Hulk, there's Valkyrie. Exactly. So I, I think he will have, like, a... He, no, exactly. Team-up. So, like, if it's... I don't want it to be a Mactan 
he wouldn't call it origin story, but like solo story. Mm. He goes on some mission and just max it up completely. But if <laughs> if there's some Stan, if there's some, I don't I don't know who who else is Mac associated with Zemo, Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe maybe they'll do like a Sharon Carter thing, um, because she was power broker. Sharon Carter. Oh, power broker. Bro, you okay. just watched. What do you mean? I didn't Sharon know she was Carter. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> right. who's the Falcon? <laughs> Well, technically, he's not the Falcon anymore. He's uh, Mac in America. You got me on that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious <laughs> to see where this would fit in the MCU because, like, the direction they seem to be going is this other dimension, crazy, like, Doctor Strange, WandaVision kind of crazy shit mm. and, like, and Spider-Man and all that. Which, by the way, also the Doctor Octopus actor, Alfred Molina, he confirmed that he's in it. So, like, it seems to be kind of mm, confirmed. Nice, nice. Um, but, so... This seems like more of kind of a grounded story, so maybe they'll do it after the next like big Avengers climax sort of thing. Um, but we'll okay. see. Okay. I'm 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 we'll, we'll, excited we'll to see it. I I really enjoyed I enjoyed Falcon and Winter Soldier, and I like mm. I like Mac in America and like his suit and the way he used the shield and everything. So and I, well, you, and I love Mac. So will there be a Mac in America and Winter Soldier season two? Uh, I assume this movie would probably replace that, but who who knows? Okay. <laughs> then speaking of sequels or follow ups or whatever, the Meg Two is happening. Um, oh my god! I don't I don't know if you. I've seen the Meg. Okay, good because I haven't. So this would have been really just a nothing piece of. I mean, it still is, but <laughs> I mean, it's still quite nothing. So, uh, so there's very little to say about it. Jason Statham. Statham's puts gonna a spear. Yeah. He puts a spear in a megalodon's eye and it kills nice. it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you can just do that oh, for three more hours. Dwight Dwight gets eaten. Nice spoilers for the Meg, but uh, oh, <laughs> but, I mean, if you really cared that much, you probably would have seen it by now, huh? I mean, it's only fair for being in the movie The Meg. To be honest, if I was in The Meg, right. I wouldn't want to get eaten in the movie because that's like half the fun. Unless you're Statham, I guess. Then you, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't imagine Statham actually dying. In I feel life? like if Statham read a movie script where he dies, he would genuinely just rage. <laughs> Well, you know, like, there, you remember that story about the Fast and Furious scripts and, like, contracts or something where there's, they do, like, the because everyone's such a tough guy in those movies that they can't get beat up too bad in a fight. So, like, Statham yeah. and Dwayne, like, they can only, if one of them hits the other, like, one of them, then the other one has to get, like, an equally good hit in. Like, it's such a stupid... And it's, it's so weird. It's so predictable. Like, you would... If anything was going to have that, it would be those movies. Um, but yeah, so you excited for the Meg 2, uh, more Spears and Eyes. More Meg, keep keep Megging. Uh, <laughs> I won't lie, I'm kind of indifferent. I'll watch it if I've got nothing else to do, but I usually have things to do because I'm a busy man. <laughs> you usually got bracelets to put on, so... Yeah, exactly. This whole arm is going <laughs> to... Um, then we have uh, just a little bit of uh, Dewanta news... Black Adam suit will not have padding. I uh, just thought you'd you'd want to know that. Okay. So I mean, Dwayne's up- would it would it would it need padding? Well, no, because Dwayne's like a billion percent muscle. So with padding, it would be yeah. kind of disturbing. <laughs> it would just look like well, a marshmallow man. <laughs> well, do most suits have padding? Because I know yeah, I know Shazam, can- and I know Affleck Batman. I know Affleck. I mean, Affleck's in yeah. tremendous shape, but he's not like a he, he's not Dwayne sized. Yeah, every every suit I assume has a bit of a bit of padding. Um, but not to Cavill's because Cavill's kind of kind of big. Cavill's a bit of a bit of a hunk lord. Um, yeah, exactly. That's, that was what I was going for there. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it, it must. I think they all do. Cavill's a really shrimp-like man underneath. It. <laughs> Cavill takes off the suit. He's just like skin and bones. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, no. So I guess good for Dwayne, I suppose. Even though, yeah, I mean, well, no, yeah, maybe Cavill doesn't. Write in Cavill if you're listening. Um, BHL, it's invisit, com, <laughs> Which we know he is. <laughs> um, the Oscars happened. Did you see them and do you care? I, I I won't lie. I usually care quite a bit about the Oscars. There's one part that we both care a lot about, I know. Yes. We'll, get, we'll actually get to otherwise, that. Otherwise, yeah. But otherwise, I hadn't I hadn't seen, I genuinely had seen none of the movies that were nominated. That's so the thing. I had not. Wait, let I, me... I, didn't, I did not have much... Uh, much at stake or interest in it yeah let me actually see because i think i think i'm with you i don't think i saw a single film that was nominated which you know for a movie reviewing channel slightly embarrassing but um <laughs> not great but you know <laughs> it's a bit of an l on my part but <laughs> i mean i think uh what's it called nomadland which won just came to 
Disney Plus, so I'm, I'll probably watch oh, that there. But nice. Is yeah, that and, is that like an Oscar grab, or is it like a decently like interesting movie? It looks great. I've seen the trailer. It looks great. And like Trial of Chicago Seven, I've heard is really good. Um, I want to watch Judas and the Black Messiah because that that does sound and look pretty. Yeah, pretty no, I've seen good. I've seen like stuff from all these. They all look very good. I uh, the only one maybe I wouldn't watch. I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> for the film critique lifestyle, I would. But The Father, mm. simply because it just looks so soul crushing and like deeply like you know those movies that are like sad and they're really good so they're really effective at making you just absolutely like manchester just, by the sea ball yeah like <laughs> well, my dad told me a saying that was like and doesn't apply to the father but you know <laughs> similar message but it's like okay. a danish thing where you say like life's too short for watching french films because french films are like super sad apparently or something so oh, i thought you're gonna say bad no. <laughs> so you know like i don't know I'll, I would watch it, like, for the, you know, the filmmaking and everything, but just, mm-hmm. of all of these, it'll probably be the one I watched last, is, is my Yeah, yeah fair, fair. But, um, but yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really watch it, because it's also, like, you know, it was a kind of non-ceremony, you know, there was, like, the people nominated there, and because I hadn't no, really seen yeah, anything. exactly, it was, it, it just wasn't the same. Didn't really watch it, and not, like, at fault of anyone there, like, you know, obviously, pandemic and all that, but, yeah. Um, yeah, but still. Yeah, so, weirdly, but, but yeah, the first boy, year of the Oscars. Your boy, Kaluuya? Oh, did Kalu- Oh, is that what you were talking about? Oh no, that's no, no, that's not the main part I was okay. talking about. But he did win. He did, yeah. I, I personally, I, I love the Kalu and Hopkins. Yeah. Also, did you see their in memoriam segment? Because there was a bit of controversy around that. Um, because it was really. I bad. did not see the in memoriam segment. It was like weird song choice because it was kind of like upbeat, and it was like really like super fast paced. Like they showed people on screen for like. 1.5 seconds and then it would just go to the next one and there was no like clips or anything it was just like is it, it because like, so many people died or what i don't know but it looked like someone like moving through a powerpoint presentation as fast as they could and it was kind of uncomfortable i was like this feels really distasteful not, in a not, lot of ways yeah not not great tribute paying there no i don't know so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's strange um then on to the russell news that i have booked up here mm. Uh, Russell Crowe, I think we talked about that he's going to be in Thor 4, hashtag for Thor. He's playing <laughs> Zeus. In... <laughs> he's playing... Hashtag for Thor. <laughs> Macked in American for Thor is what we've come up with this episode. You can tell it's our, one God, of our best. How, how, how do we do it? At least, <laughs> at least we're not talking about Tom Cruise shitting himself this time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, so Russell Crowe will be playing Zeus in the four, for Thor, whatever the fuck I said. <laughs> <laughs> the four. <laughs> um, which, I mean, I know it's in. He's in the comics and everything. It's a little confusing when they use these like mythology characters because Thor is Norse mythology and then Zeus Greek mythology. And Zeus is Greek mythology. And, pa- yeah. and there's a Hercules in the MC in like in the Marvel world, and there's also Hercules in the DC world. But uh, I just can't keep up to be quite it's all, quite. It's frank. it's all con. So confusing, I say. <laughs> I do like Russell. I can see. I think he'd be a good Thor. At least I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> he takes over. <laughs> I think I imagine when I hear Crow Zeus, I I very much just think of his performance in uh, Superman. He does seem like kind of like a divine figure in that, like walking around all in white. He looks like he could throw some lightning in, in Superman. I think yeah. it'd be a very similar performance. Yeah, hashtag qu- crow prediction. <laughs> hashtag Pr- for prediction if you if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he, he can pull off that kind of stoic, you know, thing. Although with it being yeah. a Taika Waititi film, it'll probably be a bit more like uh, comedic. Yeah. So anyway, from now on, it's only exciting news because it's one piece of news I think you'll love, and then three pieces of Mickle news. First okay. of all, it's been revealed what the John Wick spinoff show will be about. Oh, the show called The Continental. And it will, in fact, follow a young Vincent in the 70s. Vincent, of course, being the character played by Ian McShane. Ooh. <laughs> he'll probably, he'll probably the... Vincent! He'll meet up with, um, what's his name? The, like, receptionist dude, who's also... Oh, my... I wonderful. really, I really do like the receptionist dude. He's, he's great. So, a 70s prequel around McShane. Damn. Presumably, I guess McShane will not be in it. Although, maybe... I mean, he's a, he's a young-looking man... If it's in the 70s, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> he might just be able to pull it off. But, it's um... only 50 years ago, McShane. 
McShane. I mean, is McShane even that old? Wouldn't he be like 10 in the set? McShane looks like he's like not that yeah, old. Wait. McShane looks like he's 50. It's just about McShane's conception for five seasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's a bit of an L. He's 78. I was like, I can't believe I 78. That's a bit of an he L. He looks so good for 78. What the hell? Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a W if you ask me. Ian McShane. Looking <laughs> More like E-yum. <laughs> <laughs> Turning back the clock, E-yum. <laughs> um, God. So, all right, maybe Ian will be this. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> hey, no, yeah, so are you, aren't you excited for that, uh, a Wicathin spinoff? Wait, I, I actually am, <laughs> surprisingly as it may be, but when is this coming out? I don't know, Pro- probably next year, I'd guess, because they've been talking about it for okay. forever, so. Okay, I can, I can get behind that then. Oh, there you go. Then, and now we just have a Mickelathon of news. First of all, well, first things first, um, Druck won best uh international film or oh, best foreign film i was i was so happy uh which is very cool look also known as another round is another round from, I, uh, I i don't i don't love that translation but no but um it's yeah it's a danish film uh i'm i might actually be seeing it quite soon which i'm very excited about um nice nice it looks amazing and i'm i'm very excited and also thomas Vinterbell, so it, he gave does a very it still going does it still go in the cinema the yeah movie there? Oh. It's like the only thing that will be in the cinema when they open in like a couple weeks. Okay, okay. And Thomas Vinterberg gave a very heartfelt speech uh, about his daughter mm-hmm. who was killed recently in a, an accident. And yeah. yeah, it was just it was wonderful to see. And then this news. No, it's 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 a very it's a yeah very wholesome story behind the movie. Also because it was yeah. it was filmed at her school, I believe. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, so like she was supposed to be in the movie, and it was filmed at her school to kind of like pay, uh, like pay pay respects to her. So. Yeah, no, his speech is his speech is great. Yeah, watch it if you haven't. But uh, this news, I don't know if it's I don't know how to feel about it. Cause okay, I I guess <laughs> I can't have an opinion since I haven't seen the film. But it has already been announced. It is getting an English language remake starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I saw this, which and I find this kind of awful. I don't lie. <laughs> well, it baffles me a little bit because like like a lot of films are remakes of foreign films. Like and because it's DiCaprio, the first thing I think of is The Departed is a remake. However, oh okay, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but do they not usually come out like at least a few a years? lot later? And I know yeah. like it'll come out in two years, but the fact that they announced that they're working on this literally like the day it won the Oscar, like it's still in cinemas, you know, it feels a little it, strange. <laughs> Let Mickelson breathe a little, please. <laughs> Stop burying Mickelson in so much money that he'll presumably make off the <laughs> office. <laughs> And also, having not seen the film, I can't speak on this, like, right now, obviously, but based on what I've seen from it, even the tri- uh, the poster, which has, you know, the Studentahu stuff, it's a it's very Danish based. It is very Danish. It's I a don't very know. Danish, because also drinking culture in Denmark and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, also, it was also a very controversial movie, so I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be strange. I have to say, I don't, I don't love it. I think part of the charm as well is that, or what's so cool about it is that it's a very, yeah, as you said, very Danish movie. Mm-hmm. And then it's gained like worldwide recognition, I think, right? Yeah. And then, and I think that's in part due to the fact that it kind of gives gives a peek at like the Danish drinking culture and stuff like that. So if you just take the fact or like the idea that, oh yeah, four dudes get drunk, it's like it's, <laughs> I think it takes a lot of the oomph. <laughs> Lamau, Leo. <laughs> I think it takes a lot of the oomph out of it. Yeah. Um, and and doesn't really doesn't really do drunk justice. Yeah, so I think once I've seen the film, I'll be able to comment on this in a more, you know, concrete way. But yeah, just first impression, I don't know. No, it doesn't. It doesn't sit super well with me. But uh, was isn't isn't it also strange that that it's? I mean, I guess Vintabe is like, oh yes, I get to work with Leonardo DiCaprio because he's directing the thing as well. Oh, he's and he's not directing the remake, is he? I think I think he is. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard. That that's that's what's even. I mean, this might be wrong, but I, I feel like I read that somewhere. He's like, yeah, Thomas Vinterberg and Leo are in talks of remaking the movie. Oh, I I thought it was like with a full new like cast or like crew. Oh no, I mean, I mean, okay, is definitely if involved. I I know he'd be involved, but like if he's directing, then maybe it would be more. But that seems also weird to remake your own movie like a exactly month after it comes. I mm, I don't well, I don't know about that. I don't think that's. <laughs> I think you're wrong, sir. <laughs> Wait, let me let me search this up. 
Uh, but if he is, I mean, I guess I have a bit more faith in it because he would be like another. He would round. have a reason to, but that seems weird. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like this article. Leonardo DiCaprio is producing a remake of Another Round, and we can't figure out why. <laughs> That's how I feel. Wait, is he? Pro- I thought he was star. He's starring in it, right? That's uh, I, th- I think story. he. Uh, no, he he is starring in it, but I guess he's also producing. I guess maybe mm-hmm. he's like the driving factor behind it. I don't know. Anyway, maybe what I said is wrong, but <laughs> maybe this whole Good podcast you, is wrong. It's poorly planned. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit? Then um, we have very exciting news. Mickelson. Sorry, I mean to say, Miss Mickelson <gasps> is going to be in Indiana Jones Five. He is. Which also makes... How is that franchise not dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, it also makes Mess Magnuson the first actor to ever appear in... And I mean, this is off the top of my head. I assume be f***ing crazy if there is someone else. But in Star Wars, the MCU, James Bond, and Indiana Jones. And pro- is he in something else? <laughs> and the Druk franchise. Um, <laughs> and, and the Druk fan base. <laughs> so, like, in, like, four of the biggest... Like, to be in the MCU, Star Wars, and um, James Talk. Bond. It's, it's impressive. <laughs> like, it's, and yeah, well, I mean, it is actually also very cool that he still maintains, like, the, yeah, he still does, like, the small Danish, like, you know, smaller scale stuff. And then he's in all of these crazy franchises. Like, pretty amazing. I assume he'll be a villain, but maybe that's foolish of me to assume. Yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> he's such a nice dude. Yeah, but. Um... I don't know. No, I, he, I mean, he play he plays great villains. I think. I think he could be because also Indiana Jones is usually fighting, you know, <laughs> Europeans. So, <laughs> so I could see off that box at least. <laughs> Mickelson being. Well, I guess okay. So if, like Indiana Jones is kind of like relative to Harrison Ford's age. It would be what the like the seventy early seventies maybe when this movie is set. So like. Oh, it's it's not set in in real time no because i mean the first indiana jones is like from the 30s so or like set in the 30s so if Uh so if harrison is like yeah so and the fourth one where he was pretty old is in the 50s i think so i think it'd be in the 70s right 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 Um, but harrison is coming back as indiana jones he is yeah uh i don't know yeah i'm mm, i don't know how i feel about it i hope it's well you know what i'm actually quite confident it'll be solid because james mangold of of Logan fame and other good things. Um, that one where Sylvester Stallone is in like a small town. It's pretty good. Um, Rocky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, I don't want to just draw the Logan comparison, but maybe it'll be about kind of a more interesting character look at him instead of just like old mm-hmm. man Jones trying to be like young old man Jones. Old man Jones survives a fridge. Yeah, it just doesn't really explosion. work. Maybe it'll be more like, yeah, more in-depth exploration and maybe he beats up mess Mason at the end or maybe even god better damn. yet mess Mason beats up mess Mason beats up oh my god that'd be epic so we'll see i can honestly see mess Mason as another indiana jones he could like pass on the torch to Mason. he like puts on his hat and uh, walks into the sunset i disagree i mean i have no love for this franchise i disagree so I'm heavily. Just saying, as much as i love Mason. i'm just saying what i think would be hashtag very dope <laughs> he is not he's no indiana but um, speaking of Megelson being in every franchise ever, uh, he shared in an interview a humiliating audition for a superhero film he did back in like 2005 or something, <laughs> where in fact he auditioned to be Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four films. Oh my and god. And he said he, I can't remember the exact quote, but he said he felt like almost insulted by the audition because it was like he went into a room and they said like, okay, like pretend you have... 80 foot arms and like say this line and Mickelson was like what the f*** is this shit <laughs> and um and then they totally did Mickelson dirty but the worst twist of the article is he says the the role went to my very good friend Yoan Grufford so <laughs> Grufford and your boy Mickelson are best of buddies which is a terrifying image as they could take over the world together and then my final piece of news and the final piece of Mickle news and I think you'll really enjoy this. Okay, Apparently okay. on the set or like in the writing process or some some time on the production of Casino Royale, your boy Mickelson and Craig really wanted to go more brutal with the Casino Royale torture scene. 
and they were like <laughs> just sitting there going back and forth and like suggesting ways that it could be even more gruesome and they had to be told like oh my god it's chill, already like one of the, the most, f- out <laughs> one of the most gruesome scenes in the entire like yeah franchise so i have as well. a i have a quote here we were discussing how to approach it and we just went further out with something that was really brutal and insane. At one point, Le Chief actually cut Bond up somewhere, which I assume means his testicles, based his, on the his scene. His testicles, probably. And he had to suffer with that for a while. At a certain point, director Mark Cam- Martin Campbell was just smiling and said, Boys, come back to the table. This is a Bond film. We can't go there. We were lost in our indie world, right? You have to respect that. It is a Bond film. That's the framework you need to understand. So yeah, Miggleson just wanted to... And, so and Craig, Miggleson clearly, also. Literally... Craig and Miggleson were told to shut the f*** up about their brutal intentions. <laughs> they were like, guys, stop being such weird f***ing guys, guys, you're freaking me out here. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so that's the news for this week. Now I do believe it is time for... The Domkinies. So, for this week's Tom News... I looked up Tom Cnu- Cruise news. I looked up Tom Cnu's. <laughs> and my computer exploded. Uh, and I found this article from Cinema Blend. I haven't read it, so we get to look at this together. Tom Cruise oh, reportedly brilliant. got mad again on the Mission Impossible 7 set, but this time the reason's pretty amusing. Well, I wonder what this could be. Because <laughs> um, last time he freaked oh, out over God. COVID protocols. This time, oh God, why do you make me read all this stupid, pointless filler, you f***ing article? No offense, Cinema Blend. Um, menacing trees. What the f***? <laughs> Sources alleged Tom Cruise was frustrated over some branches constantly brushing against his trailer's roof as he rested between takes. It reportedly got so bad that the actor called some local tree trimmers to cut down those pesky <laughs> branches. Um, God, that is so Cruise sitting there trying to meditate. I bet. <laughs> I mean, this is also according to the Daily Mail, which I do not think is a very reliable source, but... So yeah, probably not true, but let's imagine it is true. And yeah, very Cruise-esque. Poor Cruise. Also, after a long day of falling off f***ing motorcycles and trains and shit, you wouldn't want to be annoyed by branches on your trailer. I'm just, I'm surprised no, Cruise wouldn't cut true. him down himself. Like, he seems like that kind of dude. Yeah, he'd just climb up and just, like, bite him off. <laughs> he'd, like, <laughs> like some kind of cartoon animal. <laughs> like a bee, like a beaver. <laughs> I can so picture that. So, yeah, so that's the news and episode for this week. But wait, we have announcements and such. This was recorded on Saturday, a- oh, no, May 1st. Whoa, time flies. Whoa. Um, and these oh announcements are from a few days from now. So take it away, us, in a few days. Also, before we get to the announcements real quick, this is Benedict from the future. I realized as we recorded these announcements, I forgot to put in, like, to talk about some comments. Also missed a few things on the fan page. So, you know, kind of just a bit of a mess and or disaster. Uh, we don't call it poorly planned for nothing, but we'll get to those next week. But yeah, kind of uh, dropped the ball on this one a little bit. Anyway, here are the announcements and such. Cool. And we're back for the announcements and such segment. I got Freddy on the phone holding him up God to the mic. Damn. Oh, <laughs> I really need to figure out a better way of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> It's absolute trash. I guarantee you everyone clicks off when this segment comes on. But anyway, um, we have uh, a couple announcements. First of all, if you have any ideas for episode 100, feel free to leave them down below. I will say I looked into it, and the pod four-year anniversary is, in fact, May 5th, which is today when we're recording this. Which will be two days ago when this came out, but that was when the first episode went up on the BHL Hudson channel, back when this was main channel content and not right, some little... Alright, not this B-side shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, happy four years to us. Um, uh, and yeah. Thank you. Good, good stuff, I guess. It's kind of a <laughs> little bit sad, but also <laughs> kind of incredible. We haven't reached 100 episodes after four years, but we're getting there. And that'll be the real, yeah. the real celebration. So, yeah. Um, but good stuff. <laughs> then... I pulled an absolute Frederick move, that being an absolute moronic moment oh, okay, <laughs> of okay. my life, where, um, so, I mean, I think so, this might, this might be actually the Frederick move if I'm wrong about this, but I think, uh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't include this, uh, a few weeks ago, JC Comics sent me something, and I think I just forgot to put it in the, uh, the pod, so I'll put it in here, it's a little, a little out of date, because the, the, <laughs> the meme is a little old now, but, I still think it's a great, great thing. So remember when you and JC Comics were beefing over the Pirates of the Caribbean films a few weeks ago? 
Yes, yes, yes. So he sent me a, an image of the the Civil War, like Captain America Civil War poster. But um, on your side, you have uh, Jack Sparrow and Vince Vaughn. Okay. And on his side, uh, who does he have again? Let me, let me see. He has uh, The Bride from Kill Bill and John Wick. So, so <laughs> not saying you're doomed, but... Um, what a checkmate move. But anyway, yeah, so thank you, JC Comics, for that. Then the fan pages are linked down below on the Poorly Planned Podcast Memes fan page run by Kean. First of all, he posted a clip from my latest video, my sponsored segment, where I did a little Jim Halpert meme. He said, my favorite Beatrice moment so far. I appreciate it. I was... All right. I, I enjoyed... VPN. <laughs> I enjoyed how that turned out. It was very stupid, but I liked it. Gotta spice up the ad reads a little bit, you know? Um, uh-huh. And then this one, I absolutely love. I'm not sure what it's a screenshot from, but it's us photoshopped onto some Netflix thing. Welcome to another episode of Ben and Fred Burn. And then Brett Dalton cut out running away on fire. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's pretty good. One of my favorite memes. And it's just captioned, at Brett Dalton, run. So, <laughs> so yeah. Again, at some point, potentially episode 100, we have to destroy that cutout. I don't know if we can legally... Oh, listen, we have to get Brett Dalton on the show. <laughs> I don't know if we can legally burn it. Like, there's a park near your house where we could... Are we allowed to? We're not allowed to start fires, are we? I will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we get put in jail for arson. <laughs> that would, imagine going to jail and be like, "What are you here for?" Oh, I um, I set up Brett Dalton. A cardboard cutout of um, <laughs> Brett Dalton. But regardless, <laughs> we'll find some way of destroying it, and hopefully, it involves flames. But we'll see. Um, and yeah, so check out the fan pages linked down below. We're also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And uh, if you're listening on those, we're on YouTube, the Poorly Planned Podcast, where we post, you know, the podcast and some exclusive content, the occasional pod video, which are no longer weekly, but they're, they they come up once in a while. <laughs> um, yeah, ben and yeah. Fred watches, good stuff. So yeah, check that out. It's all good. And now back to the pod. Oh my God. I can't believe that the tree was actually what cut Tom Cruise down. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise goes up there and the tree just whacks him in half. <laughs> He just slices him from shoulder to hip. <laughs> the tree gives him the old mess to Craig treatment. <laughs> God. God, no one deserves that kind of torture. No, that is that is pretty terrifying. A conversation with Craig. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, so that was the episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did. I did not. And goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go cry. Uh, if you did, subscribe and like, I suppose, and leave a rating, a five star rating. I guess we don't we don't say that very often, but um. Oh right. Yeah, leave a five star rating, like the video, subscribe. Does, does our know. podcast have a rating? On it Spotify? has one rating, I believe. It may be from you. Um, but hey, we're oh, at five that's stars. So sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, but anyway. Um, let me search. Oh no, because I did I did read a review that was like this podcast is great, BHL is awesome, Freddie is also there, but now I can't find that one. Oh, which right. is really disappointing because that was really good. But anyway. So yeah, rate the podcast, I guess, and uh, recommend it to your friends. I don't know. I've, should we start doing more plugs at the end? <laughs> That's what the audience wants. More plugs. Yeah, exactly. More more plugs. <laughs> um, but you can find me on YouTube, BHL Hudson, Instagram, Twitter, BHL underscore Hudson. You can email the pod at bhlhudsonvids at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at FDK underscore Dalt Sniper, on Instagram at FDalgard, and on YouTube at FDK space agaming. Thank you very much for listening, and we will see you next time. Matt in America. <laughs>